G'day there, Tiny here from Off Tap Brewing. As it says on my shirt, I'm from Bubbles and Chalk again. <laughs> um, today's the day of the brewery tour. We've got 15 minutes to get to the brewery. Kesbar's at the Hyperdome, he's not here yet. We're waiting for Kesbar. We've got the gates open, waiting for the Kesar to arrive. We're having the sun at 28 degrees. That's not, that is, that's great. Yeah, I, <laughs> I look at all that though and I think, wow. They're like, fermenters, man. What they've got to do to, it's fucking great silos. What they're they've got to do to keep that cool though. They're yeah. fermenters. They're really? The ones at the front of grain silos. But all those little ones are fermenters, all yeah. the conical ones are fermenters. We're late to the tour and we're going to have to tell the, the we're going to have to shut the brewery down and tell them that we uh, we had car trouble and the car trouble was Kez's wasn't moving fast enough. <laughs> we're on our way guys. Okay guys we're at the brew house. This is the bus we're going on apparently. But who's that smart dressed young man there? Hey? Get out! Get out! It says right there. Oh, <laughs> it says oh, there. Oh. They have a toilet. Alright. <laughs> Here's the other tour buses. Right there. Don't leave it at us. Oh man, if they'd left it at us. Okay, somehow we've uh, managed to get the camera through, Keza. Cheers. Okay Oopsie. guys, here we go. Now That's we're going to have to be quicker to do this um, tour by uh, foot. But unfortunately you're officially the most dangerous thing on our side, so hence degrees and we're all together in a slow moving vehicle. I'm only mentioning this because we're heading uphill and despite the fact you'll feel the urge to get out and push, you're actually not allowed to. Although the good news is, this is actually the fast train, the other one's actually slow. <laughs> That's right, he doesn't care. Okay. So is his. <coughs> no. Your shit's inside out, man. Oh, no. This oh. is just hanging. <laughs> just hanging? <laughs> Oh, I don't want a <laughs> okay guys, welcome to CUB. You're now entering the largest brewery in Queensland. We've been producing beer in Queensland as a, Queensland as a company for over 100 years. But this particular site was built by a man named Bernard Powers back in 1987. Powers he started up. producing beer in 1988, went into joint partnership with CUB in 92. And by the 4th of December 93 we owned the site. We spent over $180 million on this site. It's now 20 times its original size. To give you some idea what that actually means, we're on 30 hectares here. Straight in front of us, on our uh, right, packing building number one, that shed up there with the two doors, was Bernie Powers Entire Brewery. We had 75 million litres of beer a year out of that shed. Every single thing else you see today was put on by CUB, cleaning the road. The road stopped just in front of the shed. As we go around the corner, you look to your far right, you'll see two white containers. They hold the fourth and largest ingredient of beer. It's water. It takes up 97% of it. As a company, we have to buy our water in from the Gold Coast City Council. Now, the rumour is you can drink it just fine. Unfortunately, we actually can't make beer out of it. So we leave the water in those containers, we bring it on site, we clean it before we can use it. Straight in front of us on our right, we're coming up to three filters, two That's green and silver. Yeah, the first green one, one down my end, says sand. It's actually crushed glass. Cleans better, lasts longer, no harm to the environment, gets rid of all the bits and pieces in the water. The second one is a carbon filter, gets rid of the smells and tastes in water. The two silver ones are the start of the reverse osmosis plant, which goes into the building at the back and gets rid of any dissolved chemicals or minerals in the water. Fluoride and chlorine. The water is now so clean that the Gold Coast City Council requires us to dirty it before we throw it away. We are incapable of dirtying water enough to, uh, for you to drink it. So no water is allowed to leave our site. We're a completely closed site. 
The only pollution that leaves this side is sewerage. Eh? Everything else stays here and we destroy it ourselves. Yeah. Once the water's clean, first place we send it to is our first stop, our brew house here in our lift. And we do this at all our sites, both in Australia and overseas, so we all start on the same page as far as clean water is concerned. Two of everything in here, we can actually run two beers at the same time. Because uh, we're not supposed to be able to take a photo, so we'll pretend I didn't see any of that. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, big, um, yes, because I'm doing the BB tour, I'm going to use the whole building all day. Okay? Uh, we only brew actually five days a week, so they're actually cleaning today. So the brew technicians come in in the morning, they open up their uh, computer, they program in a brew. They do a brew every two and a half hours, 24 hours a day, five days a week. So they finish at 6 o'clock this morning. Every time a brew comes out of this building, it's 16,666 carts. So a year off this site, we do a quarter of all the beer drunk in this country. 50 million carts of beer. We only do it for two and a half states. Queensland, Northern Territory, New South Wales, down to Sydney. From Sydney all the way around, it's done by Abbotsford and Melbourne for our company. Okay. It all starts behind my head, back wall down there. Behind the back wall is a grain silo. So, so a grain comes out of the silo, goes up a machine on the back wall and cracks her open to that porridge I showed you. You didn't see that. Think porridge. Uh, so out of the two silver handles on the back wall pointing down, each of those handles will drop 17 tonnes of grain into each container. Put that together, that's one truck load, it's about that far from the top. They're going to put water in there at exactly 67 degrees, mix it all together till it gets the consistency of lumpy porridge. And quite frankly, if you and I were looking at that, that's all we'd see, lumpy porridge. They at no stage call it that, it's called mash. They leave it sitting there for an hour. What's happening in the hour is the endosperm inside the grain is reacting with the heat of the hot water and it's making sugar. Now, as I said, we're going to add sugar, so once that starts, we move on. So before they, in Europe, before they knew about cane sugar, that process took them several hours because they had to make all the sugar then. He dropped the heat, bring it up, drop it, no sugar in aisle coal. Anyway, after one hour, they pump it into two lauder tanks directly behind me, the big one. There's one exactly the same size behind it. The reason they're so big is that halfway down, they have a false bottom with a million little holes. So what we're thinking here is a sieve. So lumpy porridge sitting on a sieve. They're going to hit that with a spar shower. That's a cute little boy word for an upside down sprinkler. So the hot water is washing through the mash, washing it out, taking out the uh, starch and the flavour. Once the hot water makes it all the way to the bottom, all that's left on the sieve is the spent grain I showed you, the husks. We waste nothing on this site. Reuse, recycle, make money. They take the husk off to one side, we sell it to local farmers as cattle food. Grain fed beef, that stuff. The liquid at the bottom of the lauder ton is the beginning of beer and it's called wort. In English it's actually spelled wash. German word, so it needs to be pronounced word. That liquid is pumped into these two kettles over here. Now, because I'm making BB, I'm going to put in the Pride of Ringwood hop, the caramel's going in now, some sugar. From our water reclamation plant on the hill, Charlie's going to send me down methane gas. Going to heat it up to 100 degrees, boil it for an hour, sterilizing the liquid. After one hour, they pump them across over here to the whirlpools, visualize a cup of tea with tea leaves. Stir it. I know it's easier to do with this, okay? Uh, you stir it, liquid goes to the outside, all the tea leaves go to the middle. Our tea leaves are called Trump, T-R-U-B. They're pure protein, smells absolutely disgusting, and it looks like lumpy custard. They suck that out, put it with half the spent grain, and the farmers that buy that off is our milk farmers. In this area, it increases milk production by 30%. It's the only time vegetarians eating protein. We have no drunk cows because there's no alcohol involved at this stage. So it's clean, it's sterilized, it's already garbage fermentation to be made into beer. It's got one tiny little problem. At 90 degrees, the stuff's way too hot. You can't leave the building until we get the temperature down to 10. And this is where this building comes into its own. We have a heat exchange system. So the pipe leading here going out the wall has all the liquid in at 90 degrees. From outside, we're going to send in another pipe of water at 4 degrees. And right next door to each other. As 90 degrees travels along, this gets cooler. When it cools down to 10, it leaves the building. The 4 degree water as it comes in collects all the heat. It gets hotter and hotter and hotter. It gets to here, it's heated up to 67, does a U-turn, starts the next mesh time. So the only time we spend money on energy in this building is for those lights, that lift, and we turn everything on Monday morning. We have to heat it the first time. 
from then on in, it's just reusing and recycling itself. This is more for the boys and the girls because we really don't care. But if we were actually standing on the floor downstairs and looking at the wall, the two pipes are like that. They're in three sections. It looks like three radiators going around this building. We have 50 kilometres of stainless steel pipe heating and cooling. Any questions? It's like gone. <laughs> Still recording. Well, we have some footage. Okay. So if you look on your right hand side in the far corner here, this is the other 50 million litres of alcohol we do a year, which is our spirits. We don't distill anything in Australia. Um, we get it all from overseas, uh, America and New Zealand. We own 10, Cougar, Black Douglas, Hunter Pipers, Kirov, Carlos, Blackjack, Barossa Brandy. It gets here at 100% proof, so think of it as a cordial. And then we water it down and we put it into bottles and cans. So between the 100% alcohol here and the CO2 plant next door, we could do some damage with a cigarette. So hence the reason we discourage it smoking. On our left hand side is where the uh, truck comes with the grain. Truck driver comes up and takes off this yellow lid. He puts a sock over it. I have no idea what he calls it. that thing over there on the wall. <laughs> Drops the grain down the hole, goes up the pipe and into the silo. It takes 13 trucks to fill a silo. We have nine of them. 780 tonnes of grain is delivered to this site every week, Monday to Friday. They're all stainless steel. They paint them white to help with the cooling process because apparently grain will blow up if it gets too hot. So between, this is the most dangerous place on site. As we go around the corner, these two last containers here have the cow food, the Trump and spent grain. It's controlled by a computer, but they've actually got a modem inside them. They phone Fred, the truck driver themselves, and say, I'm full, come empty me. So the only two humans that touch them on this side is the truck driver bringing it in, the one taking it away. Now these containers are what you guys see from the highways. You're going up from Brisbane and the Gold Coast. These are our fermentation and holding tanks. We have 62 of them. They're all stainless steel. The cladding you are looking at on the outside is for the cooling jets. That's how they control the temperature inside the container. They hold a million stubbies each and 33 of them just hold VB. So I'll just park here and tell you what's happening in fermentation. Now if we look there towards those big containers, on our left is the building we just left. And there's the pipe leaving it, with, if it was going, with the wort coming out of it. At this stage, as it leaves that building, we put the last ingredient of beer in, which is the yeast strain. Every beer has its own yeast strain, VB, we've been growing since 1864. All the yeast on this site is alive, it's liquid and kept at 4 degrees, which means it's asleep. That's actually not the technical term, but it's the one we're going to go with. So they put oxygen into that line to wake it up so it will start heating the sugar. As soon as it gets this first container over here on our right hand side, three things will happen very quickly. First thing that's going to happen is the temperature will rise from, 80, uh, from 10 degrees up to uh, 17.5. Once it hits 17.5, the cladding on the outside fills up with cold water and keeps the container cooled at that temperature. Because in our opinion, and that's all it is, our opinion, 17.5 is the best temperature that's met here. My brewer is like 20 to 25, that's fine, this is just us. The second thing that's happening is from the heat, carbon dioxide is being made. I've no idea what that is. We're going to call it the bubbles of beer, just to make it easy for me. So apparently bubbles is the last thing we put into beer. So we remove across all the bubbles at this stage. It turns out we make more bubbles than we make beer. So this side, except for Christmas time when it's only 90%, the rest of the year we're 100% self-sufficient in CO2. It's worth one and a half million dollars a year to us. We use 20 tons of CO2 a day, heating, cleaning and cooling. We get all from the bubbles and beer. Well, the third thing that happens, and the only thing I actually care about, we now have beer. It's our matured beer or green beer, but it's beer. And it's taken seven days to get to this stage. It's all been done by a computer with the brew technician smelling and tasting to make sure everything's okay. The computer system on our site has only got a margin of error of 0.2%. So after 0.2%, it will quite happily talk to the human in front of it to find out how we can fix it. Any error goes through at more than 0.2%, it will automatically, no questions asked, destroy everything. In the six years I've been here, it's only done that once. I won't tell you how many millions uh, were destroyed, it was just incredibly sad. So we're seven days in. The computer sends off an email to Jeff Day, our head brewer. G'day Jeff, the bubbles are gone, temperature's correct, and we've just hit 4.9. Jeff comes down and does the only two things on this side a computer can't do, can't smell and taste. He literally takes a glass of unmatured beer. First thing he does is smell it. What does beer smell like at this stage? Fruit salad. Green apples, red apples, special scotch and banana. Can't oh. tell you why, apparently none of that's in there. What's it taste like? Sour or ginger beer? Okay, Jeff, how's the beer? Well, it smells like fruit salad, that's all. It's damn near perfect. So at that stage, you hit the green button telling the computer to continue. At that stage, it has to get, uh, put the yeast back to sleep because it's doubled in size. It's still going mad in sugar. 
So they bring the temperature down to four degrees, the yeast falls to sleep, it's the heaviest liquid in that container, so we'll fold that feed section down the bottom there, and we'll do one of two things with it. If this is the third time we've used it, we'll just use it again. Send it back to the yeast room, next time we're making BB, out it comes again. If it's the sixth time we've used any yeast strain, it's automatically destroyed. Goes in a pipe underneath the ground, and in front of the cow food here, underneath the ground is a container we put in there and sell it. Reuse, recycle, make money. We actually sell it to several companies. There's only three I found interesting. One, uh, they use a fertilizer. Apparently it's full of B, vitamin B6 and B12. You put a tomato in there, it'll grow the size of a house. Two, uh, prawn farmers buy it, because prawns are vegetarians, I did not know that. And the third company I don't understand, because I've actually seen and smelt this stuff, but apparently Kraft buy it, paint it black and put it on toast to call it Vegemite. Vegemite. Mm. I know, weird. So, we've got unmatured beer now. We're going to send it off to our maturation tanks. There's 60 of those in the middle of the brew house. And this is where we do the lagering process. Now, lager is another fun German word. It means to store. On our site, we store our beer for between 4 and 12 days. The only beer we store for 12 days is Crown Lager. Goes into a maturation tank. Sediment settles to the bottom. The color gets richer. The flavor gets beery instead of fruit salad -y. And they tweak the alcohol to content. It has to be exactly right because that's how we're taxed. Yeah. Then after 12 days, it goes through a diametaceous earth filter. Kid you not, great big white sandy thing. Beer goes through there into bright beer storage where we bring the temperature down to minus two degrees. Once the beer is at minus two, we can actually get the bubbles to go back in. Once the bubbles are in, we can bottle it. And that's what we're heading to now is our bottling plant. So from this building on our right hand side to the bottling plant, it takes between 17 and 23 days for the beer to make it there. On our left hand side, this is where we send the bubbles to get recycled. Two ugly containers in front of us, the tall ones. This is where we keep our bubbles separate for beer. BOC container behind us when we have to buy bubbles in a Christmas time. If you ever see a BOC container on this side during the year, they're buying our excess bubbles off us. We make too much here in the year and not enough at Christmas. On our right, wow. the containers you're looking at now is for the sugar. So liquid sugar arrives here, it looks like a petrol tanker. Parks here on our right, they attach the hoses here. Suck the sugar out the back, goes and pipes underneath the ground over those containers. So it's adjunct. It's yeah. tripped up. Yeah. The next building on our right is where we taste test and check kegs every half an hour. They take a keg off the line, bring it down here, taste test, check and destroy. How do we destroy beer? Throw it down the drain, goes up to Charlie, he cleans it, sends it back on site, we wash the floors with it. You won't see uh, forklifts on this side moving beer around. We use the conveyor belts. The reason for that is during the week, Monday to Friday, there's too many trucks on our site. All the trucks came in the same way we did. If it's a V double, we'll head down the road in front of us, drive around the block and pick up alcohol. 150 V doubles a day go down that road. If it's a semi-trailer, it'll follow me around this corner. It'll be dropping off paper, plastic, cardboard cans, bottles and kegs. 400 semis a day come down this road, Monday to Friday. And that's why those conveyor belts are overhead moving the beer from shed to shed. On our right hand side is packing building line one. We have three glass lines, a can line, a spirit line, and a keg line. The biggest thing we make on this side is VB, and the reason for that is we sell a carton every two seconds in Australia. Although as a company, I know, it gets worse, we make all our money from Foster's overseas, the third largest selling beer in the world. Think about that, people. Now most people get to this day and think nobody actually works here, which is not true. Uh, Monday to Friday, 330 people turn up to work every day. Weekend, 200. Uh, 130 of them are our stand-ups, boys and girls are doing something. 200 people on this side working buildings behind computers running it. We're the number one clean brewery in the world, water efficient and uh, power efficient. To give you some idea what that actually means, top 200 breweries in the world today use four and a half litres of water to make a litre of beer. We use 2.2. Wow. One goes into beer and we lose 1.2. They use the whole four and a half litres. As we go around the corner, on our right hand side, we're going past three doors. The first door is where the glass goes in for line one. The second door is where we do our spirits, 48,700 mil a day, 33,1125. And the last door is the canning line. The boys on this side hold the record for our site. They did a million six thousand one twelve hour shift. They've got a t-shirt that says that. So we're going to park here on our left. We're going into the building on our left hand side here. It's B3 and B4 and uh, show you the bottling line. <laughs> that's a grain mill. Yeah, that's beer in there. Huh? Smell it, it's beer. Yeah, that's a grain mill. 
They said, that's what they said, they clean stuff with beer. Goes, gets processed, comes back as a cleaner. Our staff building, this room in the middle is our cafeteria, and this room down the end is our wet bar. We're one of the few breweries left in the country, we may be the only one that's got a bar on site. You can't drink alcohol during your working hours unless that's actually your job. No, when you finish working, go in there and help yourself. You can't get off site without being breathalyzed. If there's any alcohol on your uh, breath, you can't leave the site unless mum's at the gate to drive you home. So give it one hand, take away the other. There's only three things I care about in that building for each of all cool. staff, including me and my casual. We've actually got Monday to Friday a chiropractor, physiotherapist, and acupuncturist on their site. Oh. No one at CUB ever hurts their back at home. Every single person on site apparently is done it Monday morning though. As I said, it's a three and a half year waiting list to get a full time job on site. Somebody has to pass away quietly because unfortunately we've got a fair few guys working here between 62 and 74 without uh, hobbies. Now the only thing I haven't mentioned is cakes. As a company we own 700,000. When we buy a keg it lasts us 100 years unless a truck runs over it. So we get them back, we wash them six times, six times we fill it full of steam, fill it, uh, let it sit for half an hour, sterilise the cake, suck it out, put the cake upside down, takes a minute to fill a cake, and we do 600 an hour at the moment. So, on our right, that shed over there is empty. Six months ago, that shed was our cake shed. Cakes came in the first door here, went all the way down the line getting cleaned, did a U-turn, came up, did 400 cakes an hour and seven guys worked in there. They bought a machine from Italy, goes from the wall on our right to the wall on our left, down to the first door. So this middle section here, and this new machine is up in the corner behind Rocky and Bullwinkle in that shed we just left. And it's gone, it does 600 an hour, and one guy running it. So for the first time in 23 years on this site, we lost six jobs. And because of the age discrepancy on site, the company offered blanketly out six uh, guys, yeah, redundancy packages. Anybody on site who wanted it could apply for it. 15 nearly did their hips in running to the office to volunteer. Uh, so they had to do names and a hat on a Monday morning. Six very surprised wives at lunchtime, because they didn't discuss it with them, yeah. as they got home. But they just Small used it as a shed. Those, that big box there, that holds lids. That's how lids arrive in the boxes like that. Uh, yeah. That's small batch brewing. They see the, those little fucking yeah, they won't waste match them in there maybe. Yeah. Like um, uh, four years ago, it took us six days a week, 24 hours a day, to do 50 million cartons. They brought in CI, continuous improvement, that brought down to four days a week, 24 hours a day. So there's no overtime on this site. I think they do about four days a year, that's all. No room for overtime when you've got to drink beer. You'd have to get something to pick you up every We lose 100 million litres of rainwater a year. We can't collect. People don't realise it, but in Australia, rainwater for manufacturing purposes is considered recycled. We could collect it, clean it, but if we used it, we'd have to put it on the side of the bottle. We've used recycled water in the making of this beer. Hands up who thought that was rainwater. So when they change the law and they can work out how to charge us for our rainwater, over there on our right is where the dam's going. Oh, they're building the dam. <laughs> they're just waiting for the laws to change. <laughs> Okay. The government's screwed, eh? Yeah, they want to charge you for water that falls on your roof because you don't own it. They charge them. They, 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 they have to buy farms. the water yeah. from the Gold Coast City Council, yeah. clean it, then they have to, it's too clean, so they get charged to like dirty it up before, and then they can't just like, then they've got to sell it back. To I'm going to do a Pride of Ringwood only and see how close that is to VB. Okay, so I'm going to take you down to our baby warehouse. We've only actually got two warehouses with this site. The baby's here and the big one's on the Logan motorway. Our baby is five acres under roof. It holds 1,216,000 cartons or 16,000 pellets. That's literally only 10 days supply of alcohol for <laughs> two and a half states. Yeah. It would take seven days and 390 B-doubles a day to actually empty the shed. 
as we say, nothing's here longer than three weeks, but a, a usually about 15 day turnaround. It's run by one computer, two robots, Rocky and Bullwinkle, they make all the pallets, and 18 guys are forklifts. If it's wrapped in plastic, it's going on a boat in Brisbane around to Darwin. We found our carbon footprint's less, so we send it by boat instead of road train, road train, and then we road train it down from Darwin to Alice Springs. If it's glued, it's going in a, a, a truck or a container. We only make one thing on this side for export. 500 mil cans of Foster's go from here to Tunisia and Africa. And that's all we do for there. Spent grain. Spent grain. Spent grain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, sorry. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Where are the food? There we go. Let's try black. What's that one? Dark one, dark. She said it's white. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on. What's that? Oh, bosses on tap. Now take your um, thingies. I didn't get them diggies. You've got two months each, so we're going to back in. Cutlery at the end of that. It's a big word, that. Knife yeah. and fork. So just take them, <laughs> take a seat, and I'll bring your lunch over. Oh, right. What are you having, sweetheart? I did. I'll have one of the fosters, too, please. And they've got another Foster's. No worries. Whatever you guys have. And she'll have another Foster's. Yeah. Okay, easy. Awesome stuff. It's been Tack. a long, long time since I've had Oh, last, last time, weekend for me. Last time I had them would have been um, only nine. Harry's got those taps. And, uh, yes, and I know where to get them. Yeah? yeah. I was in Smithfield and... Awesome. We need, we need cutlery. We need cutlery and fosters, they said. <laughs> Chaz! Chaz! Awesome. Hey, look at you. You've only had one. You might have to cut her off already. I think so. She stays. Okay, darling, enjoy. Awesome. Oh, uh, awesome. Can't drink, please. Don't worry about it. Okay, drink it. Put it on the bar mat. Never take them anywhere. Women and stuff. Oh, that is creamy. Oh, that is crystal clear, creamy. Yeah. Can I hold those two? Charles, good deal with your creamy spilled. So, hello. I'm Katie from Off Tap Brewing. I'm stitched and unpicked. Yeah. Yeah, you can keep that. Chess. 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 Should uh, do a, the, the whole gash get this up yet? <laughs> gash? <laughs> no. Okay, she's dead. Designated conscience. Oh, they got fat too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got beer.
Rah. Rah. Oopsie. Resell it. Rah. Make Rah. more money. Rah. Rah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I spammed somebody. Spammed? Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day on YouTube, on their thing, like, left a comment, left another comment, left another comment, and she, oh shit, I forgot. Spam! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but what have we learned from this tour? They fart in their own bottles and they reclaim all their put a lot of sugar in with their beer. <laughs> they reclaim all their methane. <laughs> methane reclaimers. Fart suckers. The only thing they don't Attempting to drink VB. We're going to have to have a Foster's or a Fat Yak after this. <laughs> VB's all around, guys. Cheers. Cha ching! We're drinking VB. <laughs> That's okay. The one, the one before this was uh, Melbourne Bitter. It was better than this. Uh, it's beer. <laughs> it I crashed at the Cat Brewery. I don't know if you can see it. Put the bottle up and then, and then start filming it. I broke down at the CUB brewery. <laughs> I'll That's drive, honey. I heard on the fucking radio. I've only been drinking VB. This dude was calling in about his mate. His mate would literally pull up. If he needed to go to the bank, he would pull up at the front of the fucking bank, lift his bottom, put his hazards on, yeah. go into the bank, and jump back out, put no, his bottom down. What's on that sign right here? That's alright, man. I'm just doing a delivery. I'll only be a couple of minutes. Go to my weekly shop. That's what I'm saying. Well, I just, I just had flashbacks to death drives in the Beetle. Yeah, nothing wrong with death drive in the Beetle. It's a good thing you didn't know me would have a Falcon. Falcon. Oh, you oh, did. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Jump in that. that there was Who one wants night. to die? Hey, on, you asked me one night, do you want to die tonight? I drove oh. home drunk that night. <laughs> yeah. That's strength so driving. I not want to drive with you. No. <laughs> no. So, uh, sum the tour up, guys. Meh. Meh. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Shiny. It was alright. <laughs> VB, VB still tastes like crap. Well, and, and it's, and it's the loaded. The burger was nice. It, it's, it's loaded. The sure burger was pretty good, yes. Yeah, I, and I we said learned... the tour was alright. Lunch was good. <laughs> <laughs> we learned how much sugar actually goes into macro brewing. Shitloads. Yeah. <laughs> what grain? What's five, that? Five thousand liters out of fifteen thousand liters of beer. Okay, so uh, if why why bother spending all that time converting the grain, like the sugars from the grain, when you can just add adjuncts? Yes. <laughs> because then you've got to label it recycle. <laughs> 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 and, and Queenslanders automatically assume that's wastewater yeah, it's sewage. Yeah, toilet water. <laughs> Because recycled paper is toilet paper that's been stiffened. Yeah. That's some sand. That's some sand. That's and glass. Sand. Glass. Crushed glasses and fill. Katie, it's not 100 here, Whoa. it's 80. Yikes. <laughs> what a twat. He just How would that today, like? pulled a U turn <laughs> over double solid line. <laughs> no, that wasn't a U turn, that was. That was a six point turn. That was fucking. I've hit fuck. the wrong. Where the yeah. fuck are they going? No, 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 go, no, 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 no. Dickhead. <laughs> they heard that too. They heard that, they're throwing stones, dude, die. duck. They're throwing stones, man, duck. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I put it in yeah. the window now because I've got some seats back too far. Oh, oh, shit. Hang on, I'll fix that. You should say something earlier. Oh, there we go. Is it better? Yes. <laughs> I let my ego out. <laughs> I just let mine out as you said that. Put your seat back. <laughs> I just, I just let my ego out. And no, I've been eating jerky. You your lunchbox, didn't you? I've been eating jerky. <laughs> All right, guys. Mad tour. Bubbles and chalk. Something. Something. The camera. Something. The camera. Something. Something. The camera. Something. Something.